Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, nostalgia-driven main characters, watermelon snacks, a very unusual mystery in the walled city of Kowloon. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Spark and Manga Review. I'm your host, Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjourno, and what's up? Hope you're doing well out there, and hope you're excited for another fun-filled episode of this awesome podcast, which you can find at www.spyarkin.com, or also on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, and various other social media sites. Just type in S-P-R-A-K-N, I guarantee you'll find us one way or the other. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And with that in mind, let's actually get to the manga review of the episode, because if you remember from that last episode, I spun... That one, that only, the Wheel of Manga, and it dictated unto me something kind of interesting and kind of weird. A manga which is one of those ones which I, let's be honest, it's a little bit unusual, but it's unique at the same time. And this manga was written by Jun Miyazuki, and Jun Miyazuki is the creator of After the Rain, a story of a young girl who falls in love with an, an older man, and both of them are stuck in their life, and it shows them dealing with a relationship from a one-sided relationship and what happens and how they end up bettering themselves through this weird connection they have. This story is very different than that, but it still deals with romance in a very endearing way. And this was actually published by Shuisha and Yen Press. It's currently available, I think two volumes are out right now. The original run was November 2019. It's still coming out to this day. It's released in Weekly Young Jump Magazine and there are eight volumes out right now. There's also 72 chapters out, and it's left on a dramatic cliffhanger, which is unique and also mysterious. This is a seventh series that is a romantic science fiction slice of life story that is known simply as Kowloon Generic Romance. Now, Kowloon Generic Romance tells a story of a young woman named Reiko Kujira. And Reiko is living in the walled city of Kowloon. Now, for those who don't know, Kowloon was a city that was taken apart in the early 90s. And it was a city that was run by the Triad. And you would go there kind of to hide. It was a six-acre, just super city that was super dense, super populated, multiple levels, very hectic, and pretty much anything goes. And Kujirai, she is just living there trying to live her best life and well that's what she does and she's living in like i said it's a very walled city where it's super pressed and what she does is she works for the wong lei real estate company and that is her job she is someone who ends up selling people apartments or buildings based on what's going on because apparently in the city right now a lot of movement has been happening there's tons of issues and also weirdly enough this city seems to be mixed in time because it looks very 1980s. But you have some characters who have cell phones and other ones who are using rotary phones. And also, in the sky, there is a weird diamond that's floating there for some odd reason. But that's really not important. What's important is Reiko and her relationship with her partner in crime at the Wong Lei Real Estate Company. And we're talking about Mr... Hajime Kudo, or Kudo. And Kudo is a guy who is really a mess. He constantly shows up at the last minute and is the person who kind of will bump you out of the way and say, hey, I'm going to cut in line, I'm going to be late. So he's not late, but you end up late. And he constantly tries to make it up to her by wanting to go out to say, I'll take you out to dinner or lunch to make up for what this thing I screwed you over with or this thing I forgot to do. But when she wants to go to some place that's modern and unique, like a new restaurant that opened up in the city, he wants to go to the same old restaurants, the same place he goes to every week to get the same thing. He's very uh, nostalgic about this past and about things that are going on. And she's confused by this, like the fact that she takes off her glasses and goes to the doctor and gets her eyes fixed. And he's like, you look ugly now. I don't like you without the glasses. That's weird. So Reiko ends up getting a pair of blue blocker glasses to kind of make up for him because she does kind of like him and this is them dealing with what's going on between them it's this weird chemistry and also something unusual about his past that we don't really know about but it's all about nostalgia with this it's the how the whole city is nostalgic 
And each of these characters are very different in their own way. And it's interesting as Reiko is observing and learning about Kudo that he she notices little ticks that he does. For example, he constantly gets the papers for the uh, weekly raffles, which are these receipts that you get constantly, which is a regular thing, which apparently has been around for a while. And she's been to the city a while, but apparently she doesn't remember this. Also, you have the fact that he touches the letter eight. Whenever he sees a sign for the letter eight, he'll go and touch it. And it's this kind of weird nostalgia that he has. He doesn't know why he does it, but it's just a tick he has. And it's very a will-they-won't-they they story to start off with, because are they gonna are they in love with each other? Do they care about each other? Does actually Kudo love Reiko, or is it something else going on? And it gets to the point, like, there's a will-they-won't-they they moment where they're gonna kiss, and then he's like, uh, you know you have a really long nose hair right there. Which completely mortifies her. And she's like, this guy's just a dumb ape. Why am, I, why am I even trying with this guy? But there's more going on than you'd expect. But that's not what's important. What's important is this story between the two of them and what is going on in this city. Because there is a mystery. Because there's all this advanced technology, like eye drops that will immediately fix your eyes. Or this anti-aging cream by this company. And the fact that this, the city has a mascot from this new terraforming... Uh, alien company that's doing something it's they're called the genera terra company or generic terra a new world for mankind uh based on safe and sophisticated technology and there's tons of merchandise that they're selling including their super cute mascot gene terra who this one girl's job is to make them and she's getting very depressed about it. she's like i'm way behind on my order and you see her door open up and there's millions of these little figures but i digress the main crux of this is them going them in this weird relationship they have at one point he takes her into the bowels of the city in this one street which is known as like the one nostalgic street that has not changed it's not where the young kids go it's where the older people go and there's all these interesting and weird niche restaurants that kudo knows about and reiko has never been there before but she's like this is really unique and interesting and it's them going on a date essentially because he's ozer but the weird part is that as they go into this one club after they eat uh, lunch, he's like, why don't we get a drink? We'll go to this restaurant, this club. Walks in, and the waiter's like, oh, Mr. Kudo, you're back again, and I see you brought your girl with you. And Reka's like, what are you talking about? I'm not his girl. And they know what he, she likes. And then her one of her weird ticks is that she likes eating watermelon because it's not eating it's actually drinking because it's all water and he gets her watermelon it's like them flirting back and forth however this ends up bleeding oh and i will say this has tons of fan service in this there's lots of fan service but it's well done however it's still the will they won't they and it leads to a point where she realized that she's in love with this guy and after point they end up meeting up and he accidentally kisses her really like in love with her kissing like this romantic kiss and then he opens his eyes like oh wrong person and pushes her off it's like what the hell was that about and eventually we find out the weird truth that Reiko is something's up because Reiko looks exactly like the former fiance of Kudo because she goes to the restaurant and says, how did you know me? And he's like, well, last time you were here was at you're in Mr. Kudo's engagement party. And she has a photo of her and Mr. Kudo. But something's going on and we don't know what the deal is. And I know I just made a bunch of spoilers for this, but you have to give the spoilers for this series because you don't know what the fuck is going on. It's truly mysterious and strains and just so weird that it's just compelling and intriguing and I had to explain this this thing you should read there's tons more going on in this story that's worth checking out and the artwork for this manga is amazing it's one of those ones where it's just well let's be honest it's different and strange and out there it's really out there it's just one of those ones that just you wonder about 
you really do wonder what the deal is. And it's just strange where it's all going because you don't know what the story is. And later on, more things are revealed. But every time something is revealed, another mystery is, is, is wrapped. So you don't know where it's ending. And the main story of what the deal with her is is never really resolved at this point. Or what the thing in the sky is because there's this alien thing. I mean, is this the past? Is this the present? Who knows? But it's compelling and interesting. And it is kind of heartbreaking. Because you see that she really loves Kudo. And you want her to be with him. And it's just this really romantic moment of seeing them, her slowly realize that she's in love with this guy. But then you have the question, are, are these her feelings? Or are they someone else's? And what is the deal? What's going on? And that's what you really want to know. So this is one of those mangas that I highly recommend just for the plot itself. But the characters are unique. Uh, the fact our main character is 32 years old, they bring that up. Uh, she might be younger, I don't know, but the character is very one. The setting is, un is a unique premise in and of itself because Kowloon, just reading about it to research for this manga, it is fascinating and horrifying. It literally was like a lawless city that existed in Hong Kong that was just like, this is the area where we don't go into. You can go there, you could hide there for years, you can make money, you could do stuff, but it's lawless and crazy. And it makes you want to read more. The actual manga itself is beautifully done. It has some great color artwork in it, which is just very subtle. And it's the art is just beautiful in this. And it makes you want to know more about what's going on. I love that the actual uh, inside cover is her apartment building. And there's all these little watermarks that just... It, I'm not going to sell it anymore. The only thing that does bring it down, there's one thing that brings it down, and what it is is that it is fan service -y and it is, if you're not in a slice of life and you're not in a romance, you're going to get nothing out of this. Or if you're someone who has to know what happens, you're going to hate this completely. And I'm not going to lie. There are tons of questions that are not resolved in seven volumes. You have no idea some of these things, and you're like... What is the story? What is going on? Tell me now. So this will frustrate you in a good way, but it's going to frustrate a lot of people. There is no action to say to this. It's all just very lovey-dovey and will-they-won't-they they drama. The sci-fi element is really cool, though. I'm not going to spoil anything about that. You have to read it, but it gets very interesting very quickly. And like I said, they reveal things, but when they reveal something, something else gets revealed. And you're like, wait a minute, what is that about? And how does that connect to here? And you get a little bit confused. So for that reason, I have to give Kowloon Generic Romance, which is definitely not a generic romance, a Borrow From a Friend Don't Return Unless Offered Pocky. It's really good. It's got a little couple of issues, and the fan service isn't even bad fan service. It is, though, it's like, it's not even like bad fan service like, for example, Showman Sample or any hentai. It's very subtle, but the scenes are, like, it's just so shocking from what you, this wholesome story that's like, well, that's really slutty. When it really shouldn't, it isn't that slutty, it just pops out in like, it's a moment of just out there and just kind of shocks you a little bit. And... There isn't any real nudity in it. Like, there's one scene where Kudo goes to a adult theater, and he's watching stuff, but you don't see anything. You just see his head, and he's just kind of his reaction to his stuff. And then he remembers things that have happened earlier. So, definitely check this out. Now, if you've read uh, Kowloon Generic Romance, and you had different opinions, or if you agreed with me, let me know. Leave a comment down below, or you can email me personally at... Zan, that's X-A-N, at Spirekin.com, or you could tweet me at Spirekin, S-P-R-A-K-N, and let me know your thoughts on that. It's pretty cool that how it goes, but I digress. Um, so with that in mind, let's actually get to the next part, which is the manga releases for the day. Now, these were released yesterday, which is going to be the 21st of February, 2023, and let's get to it, um, shall we? There we go. So, what was released this week? Let's find out, shall we? 
So first off this week, we had released... Well, there's a lot that came out this week. We had 73 titles that came out this week. First off, we have A Sister's All You Need, Volume 14, The Light Novel. Then after that, we have... Isla Sometimes Hides Her Feelings in Russian, Volume 2. Apparently Disillusioned Adventures Will Save the World, Volume 2, the light novel. Assorted Entanglements, Volume 1. Banished from the Heroes Party, I Decide to Live a Quiet Life in the Countryside, Volume 4, the manga. Blue Lock, Volume 5. Bofuri, I Don't Want to Get Hurt, So I'll Max Out My Defense, Volume 8, The Light Novel. Bungo Stray Dogs, Dead Apple, Volume 2, and Bungo Stray Dogs, Wan, Volume 4, The Manga. We have Chain Soldier, Volume 3. Chitose is in the Ramune Bottle, Volume 3. Chojin X, Volume 1. Classroom of the Elite, Volume 5. Cross-dressing villainess Cecile Selvi, Volume 3. Data Live, Volume 8, The Light Novel. Death March of the Parallel World, Volume 13 of the manga, and Volume 18 of the light novel. Failure Frame, I Became the Strongest and Annihilated Everyone with Low-Level Spells, Light Novel, Volume 6. Final Fantasy Lost Stranger, Volume 8. Fire Force Volume 31, Flying Witch Volume 11, Go Go Loser Ranger Volume 3, Golden Kamui Volume 28, Hyatt the Combat Butler Volume 41, and yes, that's right, 41 volumes of Hyatt the Combat Butler. There is no end to this series in sight. After this, we have. Hazuri Skill, the guild member with a worthless skill, is actually a legendary assassin, Volume 5. Heaven's Design Team, Volume 8. Hinoa Ga Crush, Volume 7. Hirano and Kagura, the novel. Kamino Jihen, Volume 4. Last Gender, Volume 2. Level 1 Demon Lord and One Room Hero, Volume 5. Magistellus Bad Trip, Volume 3, The Light Novel. Mermaid Scales and the Town of Sand, The Manga. Mint Chocolate, Volume 7. Ms. Miazen Would Love to Get Closer to You, Volume 3. Mission Yazakura Family, Volume 2. Peach Boy Riverside, Volume 10. ReZero, Starting Life in Another World, Chapter 4, The Sanctum and the Witch of Greed, Volume 5. Reign of the Seven Spellblades, Volume 5. Rooster Fighter, Volume 3. Run Away With Me Girl, Volume 2. Sasaki and Miyano, Volume 7. School Live Letters. Shadow House, Volume 3. Shangri-La Frontier, Volume 4. Solo Leveling, Volume 7, The Novel. SOTUS Volume 1. I have no idea what this is about. At first I thought this was Secretary of the United States. That is not what this is about. This is something entirely different. But anyway, we digress. Next we have... Stars of Chaos, Xiao Po Lang, Volume 1. Actually, no. Sorry. Sweet Poolside, the manga. Tezcatlipolka, which I cannot pronounce that right, but yeah. The 100 Girlfriends Who Really, 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 Really Love You, Volume 5. The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten, Volume 5, Light Novel. The Beginning After the End, Volume 2, which is actually a comic, not a manga. The Bride of Demise, Volume 3. 
The Detective is Already Dead, Volume 4, the manga. The Eminence in Shadow, Volume 6, manga. The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses, Volume 2. The Girl in the Arcade, Volume 3. The Great Cleric, Volume 1. The Hero is Overpowered but Overly Cautious, Volume 5. The Holy Grail of Eris, Volume 3. The Princess of Convenient Plot Devices, Volume 1, the manga. The Seven Deadly Sins, Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Volume 7. The Way of the House Husband, Volume 9. The Wolf Never Sleeps, Volume 3. The World's Finest Assassin Gets Reincarnated in Another World as an Aristocrat, Volume 4. This is the manga, not the light novel. The World's Strongest Weir God, Labyrinth Country's Novice Seeker, Volume 5. This is the manga. Toilet Bound Hanukkah Kun, Volume 17. Twin Star Exorcist, Volume 27. Uncle from Another World, Volume 6. Unnamed Memory, Volume 2. Villains Are Destined to Die, Volume 2. You Call That Service, Volume 7, The Light Novel. And then last, and certainly not least, we have ZOM 100, Bucket List of the Dead, Volume 9. Now, the ones I am excited about personally are ZOM 100, Bucket of the List, uh, Bucket List of the Dead, uh, World's Finest Assassin, Way of the House Husband, The Girl in the Arcade, Tecatlipoca, Sweet Poolside, So I'm a Spider, So What?, which actually didn't come out this week. Uh, Peach Boy Riverside. Last Gender. Heaven's Design Team. Go Go Loser Ranger. And then last and certainly not least, Blue Lock. Uh, which ones you're most excited about? Uh, leave me a comment down below or let me know by email me at zan, that's X-A-N, at spirekin.com or tweet me at spirekin. And before I go any further, I'd like to... Thank you for listening and watching this video and listening to the podcast. I appreciate each and every one of you. You're all awesome. And every email I get, every comment I get, every new subscriber, it gives me more motivation to keep doing this podcast because I love doing this. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'm an old man who has to read manga with thick, thick glasses and a magnifying glass and large print. If you do enjoy what you hear and you'd like to help us some more, you can support our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash spark and help us create more fun content for you to enjoy. We have four tiers with tons of fun cool things for you to check out tons of unreleased episodes videos rants raves and just some really fun rewards for the four different tiers we have that's patreon.com forward slash spirekin and with that in mind thank you so much for listening i appreciate each and every one of you and let's get to the part that all of you have been waiting for and what am i talking about i'm talking about that one that only the Yes, friends, the Wheel of Manga, except no substitute. Now, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with ten slots on it. What I've done is I've assigned a manga top to each of the ten slots. What we're going to do is we're going to spin the Wheel of Manga. Whatever number it lands on, that is the manga I'm going to review in the next episode of the Spire and Manga Review, episode 508. Yes, 508 episodes since this podcast began, and I am excited to see what we have. We've got some great new titles on here, some old ones, and some which are just kind of weird. So let's spin, see what we're going to review in the next episode, shall we? Okay, number five. Oh, finally that one has come up. So in the next episode, I'm reviewing a sports manga about, well, I believe it's volleyball. Yes, we're talking about Haikyuu. I've actually never read this manga, so this should be kind of fun. So next week, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking about, yep, you guessed it, volleyball and Haikyuu. So with that in mind, as usual, I'm your host, Zan. I'm Gonsville. I'll catch you guys next time, and, well, keep reading manga. See you later. <laughs>